Hi, and welcome to Black on the Mat, the space where culture, community, and yoga intersect through our lived experiences. We're your host, I'm Danielle. And I'm Seisha. Join us on this journey to bring representation and shed light on often overlooked stories on the yoga mat. We're creating an accessible roadmap into yoga for Black people, building a community in this predominantly white space. And letting folks already into yoga know that we're here. Happy Thursday. How are you doing? Happy Thursday. I had to think about what day it was. <laughs> it is a day of the week. It is a day yes. of the week. Um, How I'm doing. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Yes. Uh I just finished teaching a class and it was everything. I don't know, like, I love being a teacher. Mm -hmm. I love being a teacher, but I know what it feels like to have a really crappy teacher. Like, if I could find, and I say, I'm going to probably say this several times on the podcast, if I can find every crappy teacher I had that made me hate yoga and go mm -hmm. back and be like, oh, what was that? I said this on my head. Look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm getting paper or anything like that, but like, look at me now, because if it wasn't for you, if I would allowed you to be my only knowledge of what is yoga, I wouldn't be here. Mm. And honestly, so as a person, so I told you, I told you, I don't remember what we've said in the podcast necessarily. My grandmother raised three different generations of educators. Yeah. Education is a something I am passionate about. It means a lot to me. And so it's genuinely painful and frustrating and scary to me that there are teachers that teach things that hurt people. Yoga teachers that are gonna push you to past what your body is supposed to be able to do, especially right now. Um, you know, like not pushing the concept of longevity and like follow through and respecting your body and yourself and in any other way of these ways, right? Like those things are extremely frustrating for me. So I also wish that you could round them up <laughs> those teachers and just be like, all right, so look, we got to get it together. Okay. <laughs> You're getting a fine. There's a yoga fine for being a really bad teacher, but there's great teachers. So in today's topic, we wanted to talk about like, how do you find the best teacher? Like, and not the best teacher, let's just say there's no best teacher, but how do you find the right teacher for you? Because right. what's a great teacher for you may be a different teacher for me. And I'm positive it's going to be different because we like different things and it's okay. In the last episode, we talked about um, a cultural appropriation and feeling underrepresented or unrepresented in your yoga classes and things like that and and not getting a fuller spectrum picture of what yoga actually is versus like just the physical asanas and things like that even though yes you can take it for that if the class that you're taking offers only that you're really not getting a lot out of it all together as a practice and the faster you're going to grow out of a class like that if you actually stick to the practice so that's also a thing um but yeah so i i'm just gonna jump right in and ask you what is one thing that you know you look for in a yoga teacher or you would suggest that people look for in a yoga teacher so i'm gonna backtrack that slightly first you need to know what what do you what do you want out of a class first before you can start figuring out if this teacher is going to be right for me or if this is going to be a good fit for me you gotta figure out what is your fit you gotta figure out what what do you want in a class is it that you want you know a spiritual class do you want to feel like you're sweating like what do you want in a class once you kind of figure out that what do you desire out of a yoga class and it may be different each day some days I want to feel a little bit like, yeah, I'm just kind of feeling, you know, grown and sexy. Maybe it's a, a restorative class. Or if I want something that's a little bit more hardcore, I'm doing a Jivanuti class or another Kalun Yogi class where it's just breath work. What do you want to focus in on? So once I figured that out, what do I look for in a teacher? For me, I mean, <laughs> for me first, if I can find someone who looks like me, great. Cause I like to support. I like to support, but I think outside of that, I look for, and maybe this is me. I like to fill in someone's energy. <laughs> I know very, I woo, very woo <laughs> of me, but I'm like, I like to see what is your heart. I like to see like when I walk in the door, Hey, how's it going? 
like, are you new? Do you know this practice? And like, are they greeting me? That's what I kind of look for in a teacher. I like to read the description of the class too. So that's for me, it's like, I look to, does this feel like you can, I feel like when you read into some what people's words and they, the words that they use, you can be like, is this going to be for me or not? So that's the first thing I think I kind of look through. What about you? Hmm. Um, I would say, I, I honestly, yes, let's put that paramount. We could put that as like A over number one of like, yeah, I look for some sort of representation. Um, and that doesn't mean that all the yoga teachers I've had have looked like me that at all. Most don't. Right. Most don't. I don't have the option for that. Um, but I, you know, I look for something that gives me a, a level of, I think that when I look at you, you may know what's going on with my body too, right? Um, because I have also been in the classes where it's like somebody's trying to get me to do something or I'm receiving feedback from a colleague that is telling me that the way my body, like what I'm doing, I need to do this or I need to adjust this way or whatever it is. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's ass. Um, I can't do anything about that. So I, when I, when I've been my, this is where it stops. And, you know, things like that, like just I, people that are going to give me that concept of like representation, of comfort, of understanding, because when you start pushing me and I'm very flexible, when you start pushing me past my level of, of comfort, I know that you are quite literally hurting and harming people around me. I'm not really. So how do you go about, well, what is your like number one tip is how does someone figure this out before that they're going to have a person before they actually enter the class? Is there a way for someone to figure these things out for you? Um, so yes and no. I feel like kind of, but not really. I would say it's social media is what it is. Social media has created a space where yoga teachers have tried to brand themselves for the most part and promote their classes and talk about what they do and show themselves. So like you can get a really good idea of what to expect in somebody's class from evaluating their social media, maybe even reaching out and asking some questions. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know personally, I put my, I put a, a couple videos on YouTube just of different lengths to show my teaching style. Mm -hmm. I feel like I, I personally hope that that helps people understand how I teach and what that feels like um, when they attend like online classes and things like that. So those are, those are things that should exist, I feel like, for a, a lot of teachers. Or if you know that like, they work at studios, you can check out the reviews of studios. That's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, you can check out the reviews of individual teachers, the whole studio itself, like what the vibe is there. Um, and doing your research, basically. Doing your research on what it is. Now, what I do want to say about that is social media is a show. <laughs> it is. <laughs> So you might not 100% get what you think you're getting from that picture. But on this flip side of that, because I think about me and you were talking about the YouTube videos, how I am on YouTube ain't the same way that I am in person. On the YouTube, I feel like I'm, I feel more nervous in YouTube. And not that I'm, that I'm nervous, but I'm like, I'm trying to, like, because I don't, I, I'm not feeling into the energy in the room. So I'm just doing something. And I'm, again, I'm a person who works on, this is what I feel in this space. And so I feel feel my YouTube videos are a little bit drier than how I am in person in class. You know, I'm like today we were shaking. I'm like, if you need to twerk it out, Beyonce is not going to be mad at you. <laughs> so you're yeah, not yeah. getting that in the YouTube. So I want people to keep in mind sure. that you may not get some of that as well. But I love your recommendations, especially about reviews. Like if you're using like MindBody and all these other places, they have reviews. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you need to just test it out. For me, and this is such a funky little thing, but I'm going to sit here and say it, the music matters. Absolutely. Like, especially in Kundalini, I love Kundalini Yoga, you know that. And now I'm going to trash part of it. Some of this music sounds like the, like, like, I feel like I'm back in my Catholic church and or it's, I feel like I'm in the 70s and it's like this really funky, like marchy type of music. And mm -hmm. I was like, it drives me insane back there was your energy response to my energy does not respond to it very well like i'm like i'm like i'm trying i'm trying but i'm like if this song don't end soon i go we all gonna be upset because i'm about to say something um so you know music matters to me music yes. matters to me but the other thing that matters to me is the studio itself 
it's not just the teacher, you know, having a studio that feels inviting and feels comfortable versus something that seems dark, a little dingy, might be a little funky because there's some studios that don't smell right. Don't smell. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, and that's, that, that's a real thing. You know, I, I appreciate that you're trying to be nice about it. If your studio smells like feet, when I walk in, I'm never walking in again. Yeah. But it happens. It happens. And, like, and strong, right? Like I'm not, and if it's like a rainy day and it's a packed class, I could accept somebody's shoes are just nasty and it's, you know, then and I've never smelled this before or I don't expect it or whatever. It's it's only in that corner when I fine. That's yeah. that's real life. I, it smells like the bottom of the gym bag after the boys play football. No. Mm -mm. I don't want to be in here. My spirit doesn't feel clean in this piece. Like <laughs> this, so, so yeah, the studio itself, and then like the energy of the people. I there are there are studios that are just full of people that don't look like us, but have great energy, yeah. right? Like that's a real thing. And then the the opposite is also true. So like even though yes, Paramount is like trying to find a level of representation in my head, like for me specifically, understanding that like the energy of this space is pretty chill, pretty cool vibes with me. I like it. I feel supported. I feel um, heard if I say something I feel respected in my body in my space all that like I, if I, I feel like this is a good space then it's a good space um, and you know I I agree with what you said as far as like just trying it out unfortunately you can try you can check you can look you can research you can do all the things but when you try it out when you go there if everything say everything online had been a lie when you try it out, it's not going to feel like how it made you feel when you read it. And you re felt all those warm fuzzies reading it. Yeah. Allow it, allow the space to try it again. I know I said that in another episode too. Try it out and allow the space to try it again. Try somewhere else. Try something different. Try a different teacher. Try a different style. Um, and you might need different teachers or different studios or different classes for different styles of yoga, yeah. right? Not every yoga studio is going to teach Kundalini. Not every yoga studio has hot power vinyasa. Like you have to, and you don't necessarily expect those things at the same place. So trying it out and trying different places, learning about what the options are around you, hugely important. So this is my question to you, because I'm curious to see what your take is on this. Have you ever walked out of a class? I have not. Okay. I haven't either. Um, I know we've had people who've been on here who said they have, and I don't personally feel comfortable walking out, but I was wondering if you had like tips behind that. So I'm not gonna even go there, but like just walk out stage left. I know that some people, when you don't, like some people do adjustments and maybe you may not want someone doing adjustments on you, especially the first time. Maybe yeah. it's like, you know, so maybe the first time you're doing the class, you're still, you know, feeling the person out, it's like a first date, you know, don't touch me on the first date. <laughs> Maybe yeah. the second date, we good with the touch, but on the first date, I'm like, I don't know you like that. Don't touch me. And, you know, teachers are okay with you saying, I don't want to be adjusted because sometimes I feel some students don't say no because they feel like, oh, well, everyone else is. I need you to honor your body today. I need you to honor your soul. If you don't know this person, maybe that first class isn't the time for you to get that adjustment. And so that's something I would say, but I'm curious for you, like what are qualities that you love in the, the teachers who are like everything for you? Like, do you see any commonalities? Um, I would say the classes that I like to attend for me are are fun, right? The the music, like you said, is a is a factor. It's it's driving for me. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying it when I feel like I'm really holding something or sweating or whatever. When I feel like I'm pushing through in whatever way that that means, if the music feels good to me, resonates well, as that's motivating versus like, I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> I'm trying to hold the pose. I'm like, why do you look like the pose I did today? I was like, we were had our arms out like that. I was like, she's, were you in class? <laughs> I was, you were sending me the energy. That was what it was. Um, <laughs> I look, so yeah, I look for fun. I look for that kind of vibrance, that vibe, that, the, the energy that makes me want to continue doing the class and like come back. Um, I'm looking for supportive and honestly, I'm not 
looking for too much, right? So if I feel like you adjusting everybody for everything, every time, you probably doing too much for me. Mm-hmm. Um, cause even myself, I do, I do adjustments in, in class and, and that's a thing for me as doing more, tr- teaching more trauma informed style. Like I always ask if I can touch, um, when people are in that first child's pose, I just let them know, please raise a hand. If you are, um, if you are comfortable with me making adjustments or touching you. Right. And then that way, you, nobody else is seeing this. You get to make that quiet decision. Um, and then, and honestly, I have never had a class where a person didn't raise their hand and they didn't talk to me about it at some point in time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I had one person not raise their hand in one of the last bigger classes that I taught for the sorority here. And, um, she was like, yeah, uh, you know, like I had a knee injury and I know you don't know that. So I didn't want to blah, 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 blah. Great know your body, respect your body, respect your boundaries. This is, you have an opportunity to create boundaries. If that's a hard thing for you, this is a great practice because can't nobody break up with you. Um, you You can't lose the relationship of your family just to practice it. Oh, no, thank you. No touch, (laughs) no adjustments. That's it. Um, and so, yeah, and places that don't respect that, if I, I, I think that was the conversation we were having about like not respecting that as the boundary. So like the girl was like, I need to leave. I need to get out of here. And it was very frustrating. I feel like if you are in a space ever in your next relationship, it, at your mama's house, um, just whatever, as long as it's not the courthouse, because that's a legal thing. That's not my business. If you feel like I would rather leave. I need to get out of here. This is terrible. I hate that this person is doing it. Leave. And then tell them Sasha told you. And then tell them to come talk to me. And (laughs) I don't care. (laughs) Send them to me. That's fine. But I want you to feel empowered to leave if you feel like you are being harmed. If you feel like you're being disregarded. If you feel like you're receiving education, treatment, whatever that is harmful to you, um, leave. And then when they ask, where are you going? You're abusing me. Um, <laughs> so See, I come from a different line of like, <laughs> mm, I don't know about that. Sasha said that. I mean, me personally, cool. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I respect you. I, mm, no, I, like I would, I'm like, no, <laughs> don't go out yelling. I'm being abused. <laughs> no, leave quietly. Absolutely. Don't disrupt if you don't have to. Leave quietly no matter what. But like if okay. somebody is trying to fight you on it, okay. You created the scene. Let's finish it. Now we can be better. We can be more in, in alignment. Cause I was like, do not go out making a scene. This ain't a real Housewives of Atlanta moment. We are not storming out. We are not loving hip hop. This is just take a moment and gather your stuff if you're going to leave quietly and exit stage left and keep it moving Mm -hmm. all right so for me what do i love in teachers like i so most of my favorite teachers were not people of color and that's sad like i have some great teachers who are people of color but like some of my favorite teachers are not teachers of color and i'm totally fine with that but what they all have in common is again this is for me i love that they will have a really good Dharma talk. Dharma talk is that, I call it, it's like the sermon. This this is the yoga sermon. It feels like we're in church and I'm getting something not just out of the practice, but I'm getting something out of their, the wisdom, the thoughts that they're talking about, the theme that they've created for the class. That's important to me. I think that's one of the commonalities that I see in, in a good teacher for me. I love that they give modifications. I think for me, a good teacher knows how to give modifications. Another thing about a good teacher that I've noticed is that I feel that they are connected to the work that they're doing. I don't feel like this is just another job. Like, you know, you're at a restaurant, happened the other day, and you know this person is just getting a paycheck. I don't want a yoga teacher that feels like they're just getting a paycheck. Yeah. I want to feel that they love what they do they care about what they're doing so that's what it is for me that's how i would say and there's a spiritual aspect but that's not for everyone but those are what i see as good qualities in a yoga teacher anything else for you that you want to add for kind of wrap up today 
Um, I feel like, so the question that I have, I guess is, as a fellow yoga teacher as well, I, I'm wondering if there's a universal idea or if it is kind of different for all teachers, but what is that ending feeling? How could you describe the ending feeling of a yoga class to say, this is what I should have felt. Yes, I feel good. This was a good class experience. What does that look like? I don't think that's universal because I'm thinking, okay, how I would feel, and maybe it's just me, how I would feel in a Hatha class, Vinyasa class, I don't feel the same way as a yoga nidra or a kundalini yoga class or even a yin class or a restorative class. I feel like I feel different, but for whatever I typically feel in that class, I feel that yeah, there's probably a general situation. What do you think? Um, I feel for me, this is my overall experience in honestly all of the yoga, um, yoga, meditation, mindfulness, like the active qigong, whatever, all stuff. I feel like when it's when I'm done practicing one personally like I just feel very resonant within myself like I feel very aligned I feel like like my body is warm and my heart is warm right and whatever that took to get me there that did my 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 body may physically feel different like I might be exhausted at the end of this vinyasa class versus super energized at the end of the um you know the kundalini or something you know like just whatever it is like full of that um but either way I feel very like at peace and at comfort in myself like I feel like not necessarily like again you might be energized you might be tired you might be whatever but you feel comfortable yes like just that alignment like I don't really have another word for it and like as it's like kind of weird to say as well because like oh yeah beginner you should feel the alignment I don't think that means anything um <laughs> have a bit of a practice you will start to understand what that alignment feels like for you yeah and I, I I agree with what you're saying because yeah no matter whether I feel energized or I feel like I you know took some drugs I feel high from a class or whatever it is there is that alignment so yeah I guess there is a universal feeling that I have that I did think about I like your style of thinking that way thank you yeah wait wait <laughs> my hair's gonna move wait for it <laughs> I swear it's going to move. Frederick Douglass moments. <laughs> Welcome to Black on the Mat. Ooh. Your hair may not move. Hilarious. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about being your way in the middle of Shavasana because it's not moving whatsoever. <laughs> this is my Shavasana pillow. Yeah, so I just, yes. I tuck it back and then I'm flat and this is my nice pillow. Oh, that's another thing for me before we really jump off <laughs> is I... For me, a good teacher gives a good rest. Mm. Shavasana isn't just two minutes. Because I've seen that it's like two or three minutes because I'm like, how do you integrate all the work that we've been doing in a two minute like, and go, stop, get up, <laughs> namaste. No, that don't work for me. Um, I am definitely guilty of a shorter Shavasana when the, but I do a longer cool down. Okay. So like, I don't, I won't ever do two minute cool down, two minute Shavasana. Like none of the, those things don't exist for me. But if we had a nice long 10 minutes here to wind down and breathe and reconnect to breath and whatever, that Shavasana might be nice and short. You've had your spinal twists, you've had these releases, be one with the mat. All right, we gotta go. Because 360 starts in two minutes. <laughs> so we got to get out of here. <laughs> we ain't got to go home. <laughs> and you could stay for 360. Just they will put the thing on top of you. So you better hurry up. Yeah. Well, any final thoughts about how to find a teacher? Um, I think, honestly, my biggest thing when it comes to the concept of finding a new teacher is just being willing to find more than one teacher mm. you may not find the one for you that first class um you may find a great teacher that first class 
you still should find other teachers. You still should experience other things. You still should feel like I learned this from this person. I learned that in this way, in this space or whatever, like allow for your unique experience to happen. Be a, be willing to cultivate that for yourself. Yeah, I agree right. with that. Having your various teachers trying out different things, but also listening to your intuition. If your intuition says, run, Becky, run. I don't know why I said Becky, but run. It's okay. Run, run quietly though. <laughs> Do not disturb your other fellow people. Well, thank you guys for joining us today on Black on the Mat, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for joining us today on Black on the Mat. Let's continue connecting, sharing our stories, and sowing the benefits of having a yoga practice in your life. Subscribe to Black on the Mat on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm Seisha, and you can find me at Thick Thigh Yoga on all social media platforms and thickthighyoga.com. I'm Danielle, and you can find me at Hello Well with Danielle on IG, YouTube, and hellowellwithdanielle.com. <laughs>